So welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the workshop for the right team for your event. My name is Emily. And I'm Sean Callahan. And today we're going to discuss different types of groups and teams that Run Synapse offers and what would be the right choice for your event. So to start out simply, what is a group? It's a collection of participants who share a common attribute or a goal. More specifically, what we're going to talk about are the features. We've got your groups teams, which we use for social and competitive grouping. Fundraiser teams, which is uh, grouping of donations. Um, and then your corporate teams, which is actually more of a uh, powerful invoicing tool. So in the groups teams, you've got um, social teams. Um, these are great for rallying friends, family, and coworkers together. Um, social teams can also drive registration volume as well as uh, connect participants and increase the overall participant experience at your race. Social groups can be created uh, with specific categories in mind, whether it's uh, age, gender, um, costumes, uh, companies, or causes. The next one is competitive teams. This type of team is created um, for people who are social but also success driven. Often awards are given for a number of different categories um, to include age, gender, and average team time. USAT and USATF are examples of organizations that have scoring structures. So this is a quote from our Turkey Trot blog that we have on Run Sign Up. Runners who participate with a team of those close to them will ultimately have more of a memorable experience. It's that experience that will bring them back next year. So should your race offer a relay? Relays are great for longer distance events um, for individuals who might not be able to participate in the full extent of a, of a, a marathon. Um, you can break it up and have legs for that event and increase your registration volume. They're used obviously for triathlons in conjunction with another feature we have for custom questions. Um, you can offer a question to the group that the, the triathlon participants are signing up for. They can select their leg, whether it's uh, swimming, biking, or running. And then that question will actually require a unique response within that group so that nobody can duplicate their, uh, their responses. Um, it can also be used for like lap races or um, obstacle courses that are you're trying to get a lap count for a relay team. So this is a quote by Chuck Spear for Run Vermont. When the race was founded in 1989, a three to five person relay was included. That allowed a lot of people who aren't really serious distant runners to participate in this event. So corporate teams. Why corporate teams? How many people have tried to use the corporate team feature? Okay. So corporate teams promote a social, team building, and healthy lifestyle element outside the normal work environment. These types of teams offer um, no participant management options, so there's no changing, switching, or removing. This feature allows corporations to supplement employee registration costs. The corporate team's feature is actually more of a powerful um, invoicing and discount tool rather than a social or competitive sign-up feature. In most cases, teams won't pay till post-race, so just keep that in mind. A rule of thumb, you'll want to have at least 25% of um, participants attending um, part of a company if you're going to use this feature. So from the, the hands before who have used corporate teams, who still uses corporate teams after they've tried it? Okay. I'm trying this year, which is why I'm sitting here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So just to kind of recap, you know, corporate teams or not, um, it is a powerful invoicing tool. You have to ask yourself the question, are you okay getting paid after the race? They do offer some prepaid packages if you want to run it as a promo. Um, you can offer a upfront fee or an invoicing fee and offer a certain amount of registrations um, not tied to the actual registration cost. And then they can supplement, uh, organizations can supplement that cost for their own employees and then pick up the back end of that on the invoicing side. And then there are limitations. So um, <laughs> teams can't be deleted. People can't move between registrations. There's no participant management features that are offered for that due to the invoicing nature. You just, you just can't move things around without the money being collected and the transaction being uh, accounted for. So fundraising teams. A fundraising team is a group of individuals working together to raise funds for a common cause or goal. This type of team consists of people who wish to make an impact. Um, the individual can choose to fundraise um, and also not participate in the event itself. Fundraising teams con consist of participants that are non-participants of the actual race. So friendly competition between teams can inspire individuals to reach new fundraising heights, all while having a positive experience for the charity or organization of their choice. 
fundraising incentives. You can force fundraising if that's the focus of your race. This kind of sets the tone. You can uh, make it an automatic process so it forces a fundraiser. Look at an independent email with that, um, separate from the registration email. Um, and you can add additional information in there so that you can really gear the focus of your race towards the fundraising. Um, you can set minimum goals. These can be forced or optional. This is really to help communicate the tone or the expectations of your race. Uh, there's, I work with one race in Seattle that has a minimum fundraiser, and if you don't have that fundraising met by the time you get to the race, you have to pay it to participate. And then fundraising refunds. This is an incentive base. Um, if you set a goal and the fundraisers reach a specific goal, say $500 in fundraising, they can get a refund back on the registration cost. Hey, Sean. Yes. Yeah, about the fundraiser refunds, is there any talk about possibly an opt-in or opt-out for that? It's like we, we had people who they, they reached their five hundred dollar minimum and then they went, No, I just wanna I just want that money to stay in the pot. Yeah, um I mean I could take a note on that. I've not heard any discussion about it yet. On the fundraisers, um there is a checkbox, so they have to opt out if they do not want their refund. So if you set up the fundraiser refunds, there's an option for them to opt out of it if they do not want it. So they can't do that? Yes. So they can't opt out of it, okay. So do you let fundraisers join fundraising teams? We pulled a statistic as food for thought. 30% of participants join teams when they're available. Some ways to encourage people to join teams would be to automate discounts and refunds. Um, as easy as getting 10 or more members to join a group, all members receive a $10 discount on their registration. So you could simplify that, and you could provide special pricing for anyone who joins a team before a specific date. This could stimulate more people to share the information with their friends, so this is an additional incentive, incentive to join the race and run with friends. Another way would be to offer rewards for a group. Fastest group, best... Um, group costume or a large group could receive something in turn for a winning. So here's just a recap of um, what are the differences in the features. So you've got your groups teams, social competitive, and then organizational, like a triathlon leg or specific points in your race. Fundraising, which is uh, takes all the individual fundraisers and points them all towards one large team. So if the whole front row here each has raised $500, then we have a $3,000 team fundraiser that we've reached and we can kind of keep track of it in that manner. And your corporate teams, which again is a, more of a powerful fund or of an invoicing tool. Um, like the general rule, if 25% of your group or your, your race is going to be coming down from, from corporations that are willing to participate, that's a good rule of thumb to think if corporate teams is the right tool for your race. So do teams register together or separately? There are a few ways of registering for a team depending on the preference of the race director and um, the settings that they have put into place. So teams can register separately or together as a team. If they register together, one participant will need to fill out all the team members' information in order to complete the transaction. Um, if they register individually, the first member of the team will create the team and it will appear in the team option um, when the others register um, separately. This gives each participant the opportunity to fill out their own personal information and then um, sign their own waiver. Just a quick question. From a liability standpoint, there are some states that have taken races to court, or, or some participants have taken a race to court where they got injured and said, well, I never signed the waiver. My buddy signed me up. Is there an ability to have that person, if, if they are one of five people that were registered in their adult age, Mm -hmm. that it, it flags it that they did not personally sign the waiver. There's that option to sign the waiver later. So that might be yeah, something yeah. that they want. Chrono Track, and this, this, is, this came up with the yeah, race super that important. Uh, had to go to court, and they won, but now not a lot of expenses. So it's, it was something that they were asking us. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah. I, I mean, I always suggest that. I mean, it just depends on how the race wants to do it. I always suggest that they allow people to join separately. So if they are going to be um, worried about something like that happening, I would suggest have everybody sign a physical copy on mm -hmm. race day um, because they're still not 100% way we can see who is the person on the under, other end of the computer signing the waiver. So somebody might type somebody else's name in. We can't 100% sure say they did it themselves. So just to avoid it, just have everybody sign a physical um, copy on race day. Or sign the check-in app. 
I'm not trying to create a fire storm. It's just oh no, that's important. Something to be aware of, and I know you guys are pretty innovative quite a bit. So no, yeah, it's a very important topic. So maximize participation. Again, that stat: thirty percent of participants join teams when they're available. That's a pretty good chunk of races that have have teams in there. You can offer special pricing. Simply, if you join a team, you get five dollars off. I can encourage people to get friends involved. Um, using social sharing for that. I joined a team, I got this discount, you should join and run with me. As well as uh, following up with automatic registration emails. After somebody registers, you can customize that email so that it goes out and says, you know, share with your friends, don't forget about the discount. Something to kind of keep everybody engaged and so that they know about it. Automatic discounts. So you can create thresholds for a team size. Um, if the team gets to 10 people, everybody from one to nine gets a refund, and then everybody after that pays a discounted amount. And it's for people to just get more people involved and get a larger group together. And then rewards and awards. Um, anything you can do for um, largest group, best costume, lar um, fastest time as, as, a, as a group or average time. That can kind of spur people to get involved. Um, I'll, share, I'll share an idea um, that we do at My Little Race. So, um, so for the largest group, so any group that has 20 people or more, they get a free pair of socks if they come and pick up <laughs> beforehand at the running store. And the running store helps supply the socks, right? And then the biggest group gets their own tent at the, at the thing. And so uh, what what happened one year, it was, it, was, it was like a beautiful thing to watch. There were two groups that were like at 80 like on Thursday, and then they were both like 85, 86, you know, 88, 88 92, 93, and they were like flooding Facebook and flooding to try to get their friends to join and stuff like that. Yeah, it was really cool. We had another example of a private porta potty too, but yeah. I mean, to each their own. So here's an example of some incentives. Um, this is me and my wife, Liesl. Who's actually standing in the back there? <laughs> <laughs> and our two friends, uh, Chris and Caroline. Um, Caroline wanted to participate in the group costume competition. Um, Lisa was not necessarily a runner, more of a swimmer, um, but she can definitely get behind costume design. So we made a little weekend out of it. Uh, went over on Friday, had dinner, made some costumes, and then uh, Lisa ran her first 10K, and the Monument 10K got two new registrations that they were not going to get in the first place. Also, the uh, prize for that would have been five hundred dollars, but we did not place. <laughs> <laughs> so, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. So, we do relays, and we have um, we like to limit. Like right now, you can have everybody sign up as a team administrator, mm -hmm. right? So, like if you have eight people on a team, all eight can go sign up as the administrator, and just for organizational things that we do, we like to just have one captain mm -hmm. for captain's gifts or for contact information or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that a, a feature that could be possible? Is there any workaround or any anything you're aware of? So the captain should be able to sign as just as the administrator. Right. They can add and additional administrators. They can, they can add them. Right. So we were hoping to limit it because what we'll, mm -hmm. sometimes what we'll have, like if we go to our group admin report mm -hmm. feature in the group teams report, mm -hmm. um, it'll shoot out eight people, mm -hmm. for, you know, eight for different people in, a, in, in the report. And we really only want one. We really only want the person that paid unless they change it. Um, so to actually limit just to one administrator versus having more than one. No, yeah, at this time. Okay. What I could suggest is just using the group type description. Mm -hmm. You just kind of put a message, only one um, group administrator, others will be removed. So when you do notice it, you could just remove the um, others. Okay. And then just, so now they, and if they ask about it, uh, the message was right here that any others would get removed. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you. Can I have a competitive and a social team? Oh. Yes, <coughs> absolutely. And the, the other one was on the corporate thing. What we typically do on the corps is, whether we do it internally or through a sign-up, is we will invoice there and then use a comp code 
or a coupon code to say, hey, if you've got 11 people, 9 people, whatever, send it to them. That way I get individual registrations for all of them that I can manage, as opposed to they send up a thing and now I'm stuck with kind of a block of stuff that's not manageable. So just my little two cents on that one. We need a coupon code and send it out to only, it creates their own link. Mm -hmm. so they can register. Yeah. Yeah, right. use your own great coupon code. That's another way to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So I'm just wondering if this could be used for a, uh, like a non-time event. So I just did a, a fundraiser marathon row mm -hmm. on the Passaic and Hackensack Rivers. Mm -hmm. And we registered individually through, you know, just through the, um, we did it through Regatta Central. But in order to broadcast the, the fundraiser and get more crews to know about it, mm -hmm. And we don't have a scoring because it's not really a race; it's a it's an event, yeah. an adventure. You you could potentially do it for a run sign up as opposed to for God Central. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're asking that you can create groups into fundraising teams, or well, fundraising teams, but yeah. it's not running, it's not walking, yeah. it's night cycling, it's not swimming, it's yeah. growing. Yeah. No, that's true. Yes, absolutely, a hundred percent. Yeah, you can you can create any type of team through any type of event. Yeah. And there's features that are customizable to change wording too. So if it's right. a, a row event, you can change that okay. so that that's what's displayed. Yes. On the triathlon uh, relays specifically, I guess that you still manage the each set membership with the relay members, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. We we have an integration for that. And then okay. is it they can uh, add or remove relay members? I guess pretty easily. It's paid on an individual basis, so you'll need each person will have to register and then sign the USAT waiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all in right. But you can remove registry. You can also issue a refund too if you want to remove somebody. If they want to switch out a relay member. Yeah, you could. There's a transfer um, option too if you want to send it to somebody else. But I think when it comes to USAT, yeah, they have to fill out some. Yeah, there's some other type of integration that they yeah. have to. We remove them in the office, and yeah. they can add That's a new one, but they don't get their USAT one day. Yeah. Back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They would have to contact USAT. Yeah, they'll have to contact USAT. Well, thank you all for coming today. We really enjoyed our time with you. If you have any questions after, feel free to come up and um, be your business card. We also have that as well. Thank so, you. Lunch is downstairs. Where are we? Downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the first floor. Lunch is downstairs. <laughs>